All right, everybody, how we doing? It's Tater time for Monday Night Football Week 3. We have another doubleheader on Monday night. We got the Eagles versus the Bucks. We have the Bengals versus the Rams. And I have two anytime touchdown picks for you guys to lock in. As you can see on the screen here, Tater time, anytime touchdown picks have not gone our way so far this year, but I am very confident that I'm going to be able to turn this around. So I appreciate everybody for sticking with me. As I mentioned, I got two anytime touchdown picks for Monday night. Thanks to the odds, all we need is one of the two to hit and we will be profitable. And let's get into it. So the play number one, this is going to be in the Eagles versus Bucks game. Give me Cade Otten anytime touchdown plus 460 odds at FanDuel. The plus 460 I think is incredible value for pretty much any starting tight end going up against the Eagles. The Eagles defense is strong at the cornerback position, but they're very weak in the middle of the field and specifically at the safety and linebacker positions. Because of that fact, teams have had success targeting the Eagles down the middle of the field, most uh, notably the tight ends against the Eagles defense. Last week, TJ Hawkinson had seven receptions, 66 yards, two touchdowns. In week one, Hunter Henry had five receptions for 56 yards and a touchdown. Overall, the Eagles have the second worst DVOA specifically at guarding tight ends, which makes sense when you look at their roster construction, which we'll get into that in a little bit. But for this week, that tight end matchup is going to be Cade Otten. I'm not necessarily saying Cade Otten is as good as those other tight ends, but he's also young and could easily grow in to being a good tight end. Last week, he caught all six of his targets, six receptions for 41 yards. The way the Eagles defense works is they put a lot of resources into their secondary. They have two very good starting cornerbacks in uh, Darius Slay and James Bradbury. They also have a third cornerback who's a young player, Josh Job, who's pretty good as well. My prediction for how this game is going to go is that they're going to move Bradbury in the slot when the uh, Bucks put either Chris Godwin or Mike Evans in the slot, and then they're going to have Josh Joe be the outside cornerback, which means that they're going to have a little bit of the defense shuffling, but that is the best way to get their best three players on the field. Godwin and Mike Evans are obviously awesome, but they don't have as much of an advantage against the Eagles cornerbacks. Even if it is Josh Job, then the Bucks will have at tight end. So I think that Maybe not in the, be in the beginning of the game, but I think that eventually they, they'll realize that's where they will have the advantage and they're going to target Kate Otten a lot, especially in the red zone is where teams have had success against the Eagles. I foresee that continuing as our first pick, Kate Otten. Next up in the Rams versus Bengals game, we are going to take Puka Nakua to score a touchdown. This is at plus 195 odds at DraftKings. So the logic here, the Rams just can't keep throwing the ball as much as they have and not have any passing touchdowns. It's just a very statistically unlikely thing to keep up. And just as statistically unlikely is for Nakua to get as many targets as he's getting while not getting any touchdowns or any red zone targets at all. Eventually, something's going to have to give in that regard. He literally leads the entire NFL in total targets, and that includes having the 49ers and Giants played one extra game, right, on Thursday Night Football. He's just getting insane work. He's got 33 targets on the year. That's through two games. 33 targets for through two games is insane. 29 of those targets have been catchable. That's an 88% catchable rate on his targets. That says a lot about Matt Stafford as a quarterback and how good he's been. Also says a lot about how well Puka Nakua has been at getting open. Now, he hasn't gotten a single red zone target. The guess here is that those are going to come. Eventually, they're going to start rewarding him with red zone targets. Stafford himself, just looking at the Rams offense, he's only even thrown the ball eight times when the Rams have gotten in the red zone compared to 13 total rushing attempts. Eventually, those two numbers are going to start becoming a little bit closer together, especially because the red zone is only uh, 20 yards and in. We're not even talking about goal line carries at the five. So they're going to start throwing the ball more in the red zone. They can't keep having all these rushing touchdowns. Again, eventually all that stuff's going to even out. And with Puka, Nakua showing that just how well of a route runner he is, how good he is at getting open and finding space in the defense. I, I do think that eventually that is going to translate in the red zone as well. Plus, 90, plus 195, pretty good value for both of them to score. Again, we just need one 
of them to score and we are profitable if both score we will be doing a very good job dipping into the losses that we have had so far i put one unit on all three of all two of them excuse me individually i also put a small amount on a parlay as well let's hope we can go two and oh or at least get one to be profitable and that's all i got so i appreciate everybody for watching make sure to like the video subscribe all that good stuff and have a good one